Can you please open your Bibles with me tonight to two openings? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Luke 11, verse 9 to 11. But let's read Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18 first. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Just a verse. The scripture says, both the path of the just is like the shining light. The, the New King James Version says it's like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The path of the just like a shining light which shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Luke chapter 11. Luke 11, and I will read from verse 9 to verse 11. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, <clears throat> and you will find. And it knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son shall ask bread from, ask for bread from any father, among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? The last verse, verse 13 here, if you then being evil, know how to give good gift to your children, how much more we, your heavenly Father, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. By the grace of God tonight, I'm going to speak to us briefly on the subject which I have titled, Lord, move me up. Can somebody say that? Say it three times. Say it again. Lord, move me up. Where are you going? Where do you want God to move you to? <clears throat> Hallelujah. I want you to understand that God is concerned about you and I. God loves you and I and is concerned and is always mindful of us. Our God is a God who wants us to have experience in life. He wants us to have good experiences. And one of the experiences God wants us to have in life is the experience of promotion. Ever say promotion. He wants you and I to have an experience of promotion in life, of change of levels, he desire it to happen to us. Because when there is a change of level in your life, God is glorified. Tell your neighbor, say, God will be glorified in your life. And that is the reason why God blesses his own people. Because through the blessing of God, you move up. Through the blessing of God, you change level. Through the blessing of God, things you don't have before, you begin to have it. Through the blessing of God, you, you live in sand and good health. So, God loves you and I, and he wants new level for every man and every woman. A man who pray, Lord, move me up, is a man with a desire. Look at your neighbor say, do you have a desire in your heart? 
to be moved to a new level. Anyone you see praying, Lord, I want you to move me, move me up. The first thing in the heart of such an individual is that he has a desire. He has a desire. The scripture says in Psalm 37, verse 4, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. God wants you and I to have desire. Tonight we're looking at desire to move to a new level, which I believe many of us have here tonight. You have a desire for a change of level. You have a desire to have things you don't have. You have a desire to be in sound and good health. You have a desire to get married. That's a new level. You have a desire. Some have a desire. I want to travel for the first time out of the country. Many of us have various desires. Let me let everyone know God also want your desires to be fulfilled and I pray for you tonight that desire in your heart for a new level in the name of Jesus it shall be fulfilled in your life say a bigger amen to that now the word desire means a strong wish to have or to do something when there is a desire in our heart that desire in the English dictionary, it means to have a strong, ever say strong wish. It's not just a wish. A desire is a strong wish. Because if it's just ordinary a wish, you will expect those things to come to pass without your inputs. But when it becomes a strong wish, it also, it, it, it will engage you as a person. When I have a desire, a strong wish in my heart, to drink water. I will not just sit down and expect water to migrate and come to me. I will move from where I am to where the source of water is. <clears throat> the Bible says in Psalm 42, as the deer panted after the brook of water, so my soul pants after you, O God. A deer desire water and he does things to make sure that that desire get fulfilled. My prayer for you today is that whatever you need to do that will make your desire come to pass, may the Lord inspire you to do it. Let me hear be a bigger, bigger amen. So, a desire is a strong wish to have or to do something. Desire is part of human life, human nature. There is nobody from childhood that do not have desire. A little baby, when they are hungry and they have a desire to suck breast, you see, you hear them crying, crying. Crying is a way of making their desires know. For a child, crying because they can't talk, they cannot say, this is what I want, but they have a way. And one thing I discover is that Mothers always understand the, the voice of the baby, even without a coherent word. When the baby is crying, the mother knows that this baby needs to be breastfed. This baby needs food. So, without you know, the mother will run and make sure that the baby is fed with breast milk. So, from childhood, we all have desire. And until the end of our life, we have desire. I've never seen any man, no matter how old the person is, without a desire. Tell your neighbor, say desire is part of human life. We all have desire for one thing or the other in our lives. As we are seated today, as our faces differ, so is our desire differ. Our desire differ. Some want children. Some want husbands. Some want a change of level financially. Some want other things. Some want academic level. They want to pass their exams. They want to move on. Some want Asu never to strike again. Because Asu strike has made some young people redundant. Always at home when they are supposed to be in school. 
Now, we all have various desires that concerns our life. The scripture says in Job chapter 13, verse 3, here was the desire of Job. He says, surely I will speak to the Almighty and I desire to reason with God. Job got a play to a, a point in his life. He said, my desire is to speak to the Almighty. I want to reason with God. I want to ask God questions. That was Job's desire. Because at this time in his life, he was in trouble. So many bombardments from the kingdom of darkness was upon him. And he did not know it was not God. He was thinking it was God that was bombarding him. So he said, look, I need to have a meeting with this God. Let all this, what have I done to you? To be bombarding me like this. But at the end of the day, he knew that it was the devil, not God. But initially, he thought it was God that was causing trouble for him. I pray today, whatever the desire you have in your heart, may the Lord grant that desire. In Psalm 27 verse 4, here was David speaking. One thing have I desired of the Lord. He said, that is what I will seek after. One thing. Everybody say, one thing. He said that I may dwell where? In the house of the Lord. Like some people run away from the house of God. David said, my own desire, one desire that I have is, that is to dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. To behold. Everybody say, behold. The beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Verse 5 says, for in the time of trouble, this is the reason why David want to be in the temple. Want to inquire of the Lord. He said, because a time of trouble will come. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me where? In his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. May the Lord hide you in his pavilion. May he hide you in, his, in the secret place of his tabernacle. What the news you are hearing, no matter the news you hear, how bad it is, it will not get to you. A thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Come and say a bigger amen. amen. David said, I have a desire to dwell in the house of God. To dwell in the house of God. In Psalm 37 verse 4, I've quoted it. Say, delight yourself in also in the Lord. And this God will give you the desires of your heart. All of us have desires. And God is interested in giving us the desires of our heart. Let's move on from there. What are the things that constitute, that should constitute our desire? What are the things that should constitute our desire? Number one, your desire must be godly. Your desire must be a godly one. Whenever people have desire, you must look at your desire. Is this a godly desire? Because not everybody that have God, that have godly desire. Desire that I have is this godly. If you have a desire to steal somebody's thing, that is ungodly desire. If you have a desire to kick somebody, that's not a godly desire. If you have a desire to defraud somebody because of offense or to, to, to pay somebody back in their coin because they have offended you, that is not a godly desire. Every child of God must look at your desire. Is this a godly de desire? The desire that I have now, is it a godly one? I, help me ask your neighbor, say, do you have a godly desire? God told us about godliness. Godly desires. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8, he says, godliness is profitable unto all things. Having the promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. Everybody say, godliness is profitable. 
Wherever you have a desire, search your heart. What is behind this desire? How godly is this desire? Is this desire in line with God? Can this be a, can we say this desire is godly? Every child of God should focus his or attention on godly desire. Godliness is a profitable thing. When your desire is godly, it's a profitable thing. When your desire becomes godly, it becomes profitable. Any desire that is ungodly is unprofitable. So it's always very good to have a godly desire. A man said, one of the friends of Job, in the book of Job chapter 34, verse 36, you know what the man's desire was? The man said, my desire he said, oh, that Job will try to the uttermost. That was his own desire. Let me read it from the old King James Version, KJV. Quickly, quickly. For 34, 36. My desire is that Job may be what? Tried. Unto the end because of his answers for wicked men. I mean, Job was in trouble. And one man who's supposed to comfort him said, I want Job to be tried. I want him to be tried. You know many times when people offend us and some bad things begin to happen to them, some people begin to laugh. Now that's an ungodly desire. You don't wish your, your the people have offended you evil. You pray for mercy for them. Everybody say mercy. You pray for mercy for them. When somebody offends you, you see, the first thought from the kingdom of darkness is, let something happen to that person. As a revenge, this man said, I want Job to be tried and tried to the end. He has not been tried to the end. Many things are wrong. His children are gone, died. His businesses collapsed. If God now tried him to the end, it means you want him to leave this physical world. That was an ungodly desire from the man who said, I want Job to be tried. Most, many times as God's children, we must censor our desire. Censor your desire. It's not that thought will not come. Thought will come, even bad one. Like somebody said, you cannot, he said, you cannot stop bored from flying over your head. Because they have opportunity in the atmosphere to fly. So as you are walking, as we are in this place now, some birds are flying over this. But you should not allow the bird to build next in your, on your head. They can fly, but don't allow them to build their house called next on your head. So you cannot stop thoughts, good or bad thoughts, but don't allow bad thoughts. To stay. Don't allow bad thought to stay. As they come, you cast them away. Every evil thought is not supposed to be in your heart. The Bible says what so he said you should think about things that are true, things that are lovely, things that are of good report. That's what God said we should think about. Either against our enemies or against people who have offended us, we should think good thought. Devil want to bring evil talk. Let something just happen. No. The Bible said, bless your enemy. He said, bless and curse not. Tell your neighbor, say, bless and curse not. Bless and curse not. Bless and curse not. When evil happened to them, it's not to our advantage. It's not to the benefit of the kingdom of God. Listen to me. Let us think and have a good desire. A godly desire. Everybody say godly desire. Our desire must be a godly one. The scripture says in the book of 1 Timothy 6, 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. It tells us the kind of desire that we should have. It said, but godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing to this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out of this world it is certain 
that we can carry not carry we can carry we cannot carry anything out of this world our desire must be a godly one colossians 3 1 from verse 1 to 3 of colossians he says if ye then be risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ seated on the right hand of god verse 2 set your affection everybody say affection that is your affection your desire on things above not on things on the earth verse 3 it says for ye are dead and your life is hid with christ in god tell your neighbor say because you are risen with christ set your affection on things above god said our desire must be a godly one number two thing that constitutes that should constitute your desire is that your desire must be eternal not temporal ever say eternal eternal desire your desire must carry an emblem of eternity your desire must carry an emblem of eternity the scripture says in philippians chapter 3 verse 10 here was the desire of paul he said that i may know him tell your neighbor say that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death our desire must be eternal in nature eternal in nature our desire must carry an emblem of eternity in view the bible recorded in the book of matthew 10 he said what shall be a profit for a man if he gain this old world and lose what his own soul what shall a man use in exchange for his life you find that in matthew chapter 10 you read it from verse 30 down what shall be a profit for a man so when you are having a desire let it have an eternal eternity in view don't let it have something of temporal nature that i may know him and the power of his resurrection it's a good thing to want to know god to have that desire knowing god brought many of us to church to learn today this is an eternal thing this is something that will bless your life because through teaching you know how to walk you know how to do things you know where to go what to know uh, where what to go to and what to touch and what not to touch teaching helps you out and anybody that will have an eternal eternity in view learn they always go to places where they will hear the word of god the bible recorded concerning mary mary magdalene and his her sister Martha. jesus visited them i mean for jesus it's like heaven the entire heaven come to you that was the mindset Martha was busy with catering ability going up and down it's a good thing to want to serve the master but mary sat down everybody say sat down say i may not have this opportunity again let me sit down and hear what the master is saying Martha got angry working with temporal thing trying to satisfy jesus with her catering ability and she got angry with Mary. Mary, he said, Master, tell Mary to come and, like, come and help me. It's a good thing to, for your sister to come and help you. But Jesus changed the equation. He said, matter, matter. You are careful and you are troubled about many things. He said, but Mary have chosen the best part, which shall not be taken away from her. What, was Mary, what has Mary chosen? Mary chose to sit down and hear the word from the living word. Mary chose to hear the word from the embodiment of the word. Everything about the word is in Jesus. Sat down. She saw more importance in sitting down to hear him than to be going about. 
Listen to me, many people today, they have left the important thing to face the most. I mean, they have left the most important thing to face things that are not very important. Your priorities must be right. Whatever your desire is, look at it. What, what will this do to me? What will this do to me? What will I get from this? Will I get anything eternal in nature or is just temporal thing? You ask yourself a question and you make a choice and decision based on your deduction. Number three, your desire must be biblically motivated. Whatever the desire you have, it must be word motivated. Ever say motivated. Let it be that you are moved by the word of God. Let it be that it is the word of God that inspire you to do what you are doing. Your desire must be biblically motivated. In Psalm 5 verse 12, Thou, o Lord, for thou, o Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will he compass him as with a shield. Many of us have been talking about, oh, we've been talking about favor since the early part of this year. We are still on favor. It's a year of God's favor. But you are just asking for favor without attaching it with the scripture. We had it on Tuesday that every word, everything you want must be backed up by the Bible. Let it be that it's the Bible that motivates you to demand for that. Thou Lord will bless the righteous. So before you say, oh God, bless me with favor. Look at the Bible. Where has God promised you favor? Once you can lay hold on it, favor is coming towards your life. God will bless the righteous. And you bless the righteous with favor. You will compass the righteous about. To every righteous person tonight, may the Lord bless you with favor. I say, may my God bless you with favor. Your desire must be biblically motivated. Any desire you have, before you carry it out, look at the scripture. Look at the scripture. Look at the scripture. If your desire is against what the Bible says, leave it. Don't do it. Don't do it. So many people have strange desire, strange desire that is not backed up with the Bible. Somebody offend me and you put the person into the world. Now, that is a strange desire. Whenever you have a desire, look at the Bible. Is this the Bible way of manifesting my grievances? Is this the Bible way of manifesting my grievances. One of the things God said to us is, when somebody sinned against you, forgive. Everybody say forgive. Say it louder, say forgive. Forgiveness is the Bible way of dealing with each other when offenses come. But in our days, we have taken it to another level. Look at your neighbor, say which level are you in now? Some people have taken it to the Old Testament. Bad the year, bad the year. In other words, what it for that? You remove my tool, I will remove one of yours. That's, that was in the Old Testament. You have become an Old Testament person in the New Testament belief. In the New Testament, tooth for tooth. Eye for an eye. You see such thing in the Bible, say an eye for an eye. You remove my eyes, you made me to have one eye. Okay, your own two will go. So that both of us can have a, <laughs> can have one one eye. Now that is not the biblical way of dealing with an offense. That's not the biblical way. You need to learn that look, what is what is motivating me to do what I'm doing? What is motivating me? If it's not the Bible, then share that thing. If your desire cannot be traced to the Bible. Then stop it and don't do it. Don't do it. 
that desire that you have after tonight, if it's not motivated by the word of God, don't do it. We are to live by the word. Tell your neighbor, say, live by the word. The scripture says in Colossians, is it 3.15? He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you, what? Richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Maybe that should be in 2.15. Let the word of, or 16, rather. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Everybody say richly. The reason why God said let the word of Christ dwell in you is so that when the word dwells in you, you all your actions, all the things that you want to do is hereby being motivated by it. Let the word of God be the intoxicating power behind your decision. Behind your decision. Let it be the intoxic ever say intoxicating. You know when you want, when people are drunk, to people who used to drink before you got born again, you know that when wine get to a point in your body, you are no longer the one operating, it's not the wine operating. People drink, if you are still drinking, stop it. I just need to tell somebody like that. People drink, they get so much intoxicated, and they begin to sing all manner of song. They are being motivated by the drink. It was the, it, when you see a gentleman who drink, and all of a sudden, a gentleman became something else. He's operating by the power of wine. Operating. God said, I want the word of God to dwell. Tell your neighbor, say, let the word dwell. In you. Richly. In other words, let it be so much that all your actions, all your decision is motivated by what? The word of God. The word of God. Don't do it. God will never say, wife, abuse your husband. Has God said that? No. No. Oh. Slap her when she abuses you. Is there that? Do, can you find that in the word of God? No. Or when you are in need, go and steal. Can you find that in the word of God? No, you can't find all of that. You have to allow the word. Tell your neighbor, say, allow the word. Allow the word. Allow your desire to be biblically motivated. Let it be that it is the word of God that is controlling your actions, your desires must be biblically motivated. In First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10, here was the prayer of Jabez. What motivated Jabez was the fact that God is a blesser. So Jabez, the Bible says, called on the God of Israel and said to God, First Chronicles chapter 4, Verse 10, he said, Oh, that thou wouldest. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that your hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God, ever say, and God granted him that which he requested. He was motivated. This prayer came from the innermost part of his heart based on his relationship with God. He knows that God is a blessing. He knows that God can enlarge somebody's coast. I pray for everyone listening tonight. May the Lord enlarge your coast. May he make your business bigger than what it is now. May he make your finances Bigger than what it is now. Say bigger, amen. amen. So Jabez prayed that prayer because he was internally motivated by the word of God, by what the word of God says concerning God. And God did not look away from him. The Bible says, and God granted him. 
when you pray tonight, God will grant you your heart desire. Say it. A, say a bigger amen. I say, my God will grant you your heart desire. The scripture says in Philippians 4, 8, he said, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true. Everybody say, whatsoever things are true. Now, things that are true based on the word. Based on the word. The word of God is called the truth. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, I am what? Life. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. And whatsoever things are of good reports. If there be any virtue. And if there be any praise. Think on these things. Look at your neighbor say, think on the truth. You know, in our days, people will not find out the truth. They will just begin to say things that are untrue. Abba, listen to me. Learn to find out what the Bible says. Let the Bible be the motivating factor on your desire. Things that are true, things that are honest, when you hear one news, before you spread it. You know, in our days, liars, but liars are many on social media. Liars. Some people receive WhatsApp message, you've not found out. You have sent it to about 100 people on your WhatsApp page. Not having search whether those things are true. Tell your neighbor, say, stop sending fake news. Stop, stop sending, stop sharing it. Once they, eh, everybody must hear. Iwaga, um, so we multiply lies. The world, the technology has given us a platform to tell more lies. Because unconfirmed information, and you spread it, unconfirmed is like spreading lies. Everybody say, whatsoever things are true. Whatever things are just. Whatever things are of good report. Whatever things are lovely. If what you want to do is not lovely, why do you do it? Why do you do it? If what you want to do is blackmailing in nature, why do you want to do what is blackmailing? And you know that when you have blackmailed your friend, that friend will never will not be will not feel confident to go to walk on the street. Why do you have to do it? Is that a lovely thing? Is that a true thing? Is that thing of good report? The Bible said, think on things that are of good report. Let your desire be biblically motivated. Any step you want to take, ask yourself, is this biblically motivated? Is what you want to say is this biblically? You check yourself. I like the prayer of David. I think that should be in Psalm either 141 or 142. He said, Set a watch over my tongue. Set it. In other words, if I want to say something, ah, the security person that is watching me will say, Oh, oh good, sir. Oh, good, sir. Oh, good, sir. Keep quiet. Set ever say set a watch. Look at your neighbor. Say, God, set a watch over my tongue. Set a watch. Whatever you don't want me to say. Even if I want to say it, squeeze the word in my mouth. Let my tongue cleave to my lip. To my to the to the top of my so that ah, you want to say ah. Your tongue is no longer working at that moment. God does not want you to say it. God has set a watch over your leaf. I pray for every member of this church, wherever you are listening to me, may the Lord set a watch over your leaf. May he set a watch over your tongue so that whatever is coming out will be things that God has ordained to come out. Not just any word. 
Is someone listening to me tonight? Everybody say, whatsoever things are true. Say, whatsoever things are honest. Say, whatsoever things are just. Say, whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. Everybody say, good report. You know, people like bad news. If a newspaper sell faster because they carry bad news, when they say 100 people have now died as a result of terrorist attack, headline, everybody will start buying it because it's a bad news. Listen to me. For a child of God, God said, you should listen more to good news. I want to listen that my brother has just been promoted. Oh, good news. My brother was once poor. I've just become rich because God helped him. Good news. My sister, who had grown older, suddenly just got married. Good news. Ever say good news. Be a listener to what? Good news. Good report. God said, for a child of God, embrace good reports. Not bad reports. Not bad news. Not people like, hey, hey. Is it because, you see, when your heart is warped in a certain manner, you will learn to listen to things that are not true. Bad reports. That's what many people are buying. We spend money to buy bad reports. The Bible is a book of what? Good news. Everybody say good news. Bible is a good, and we should set our heart for good news. Not that somebody has just backslidden. No. Don't set your heart on that. Not that somebody just fell sick. It's good to hear and to, if you are going to do something about it. But if you know you are not going to do anything about the issue, why do you hear it? Share it, boy. Share it, boy. Share it, boy. Got law. You can law. Got on law. Share it, boy. You know some people. You know there's this Yoruba, Yoruba news all around, newspaper, or got on law, or what kind of paper is that in the background? They call this Alaro Ye. What are you saying? Alaroye mean a talker. Alaroye, a talkative. But you see, if you are going to be a talkative person, spread the good news. Tell your neighbor, say, spread the good news. So that's what the Bible tells us. Be biblically motivated. Number four, your desire must not be selfish or self centered. When you have a desire to be moved up, why do you want to be moved up? Is it to consume it upon your lust? When God promotes you as a man, you are more than who you are. There are tentacles around your life. It must affect your wife, affect your children, affect people around, your, around you, your extended family. When God promotes you, it, they must see things that you have done that is no longer for me. When God promoted Abraham, Abraham, God told him in Genesis chapter 12, I will make you a what? A blessing. I will make you a blessing. In order that which I bless you with, you also extend to another person. Lord, move me up. God is saying, for what purpose? For what purpose should I move you up? When you have a desire to be promoted, a desire to have more money, a desire for one thing or the other, it should be more, it should be beyond you. You think beyond you. Tell your neighbor, say, think beyond you. When you begin to think beyond you, God will make that desire to come to pass. Are you listening to me? Is someone here tonight? Begin to think beyond you. Begin to think beyond I, me, myself. And I, when your desire is self centered, the blessing will not come upon you because God is not a self centered God. For God so loved what the world, everybody said, the world. 
to let you know that he is not a self-centered God. When you begin to have a desire to be moved up, God is saying, for what purpose do you want to be promoted? Is the kingdom included in your promotion? A man prayed in the book of Luke chapter 12. That man prayed this kind of prayer. The Bible says his, his land brought forth plentifully. Everybody say plentifully. He had a great harvest. He had a great harvest without a good desire. The only limit, he limited his desire to self. Everybody say self. He was self-centered. And when the land brought forth plentifully, he now said to himself, everybody say he said to himself, now you have so much he said my soul you now have so much good laid off for what many years he said take thy ease eat be merry he was saying that he said be merry and the scripture says that night he had not he was just having that thought in his heart God now came, he said, thou fool. May we never be a fool in life. I mean, the lamb brought forth plenty full leg. And that will not be the only year you will plow. You will sow. So, this one that brought forth plenty fully, can't you share out of it? The land of somebody will bring forth plenty fully. This same year, the year of the lost favor. Now, God is just reminding you, when it brought forth plentifully, don't consume it upon your lust. Let it affect your life, affect people around your wife, affect your husband, affect your children, affect the house of God. Are you listening to me? Because your land will bring forth. God judges us based on our desire and our thought pattern. His heart brought forth plentifully and he had no room he said, where will I bestow all these goods? Not where will I put? He has no desire for anybody to taste out of it. Where will I bestow all my goods? What I will say is, I will pull down my old barn, build another world, and I will keep those crops, and I will say to my soul, soul, you now have so much to eat for many years. Take that ease. Eat, rejoice, uh, let, let me read it and put it on the screen. And I will say to my soul, Soul, he was talking to himself, a self centered man. Thou hast much what? Good. Laid off for what? Many years. Take thy ease. Eat, drink, and be what? Self. But God said, He had not carried that out. The goods are still there. God said unto him, Thou what? When someone becomes self centered, that person is standing on the platform of a fool. When you become selfish and you become self centered and you have no desire for others to be blessed, you are standing on the platform of a fool. So God said, Thou fool, this night. Everybody say, This night. He has not eaten. He has not taken drunk. He has not been merry. There's no merry man yet. God said, if you don't want others to partake out of it, you also will not partake. He has not, he was just in his thought. And yet God said, tonight, ever say tonight, your soul shall be required of thee. Then, who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Your desire must be, must not be selfish, must not be self-centered. Lord, move me up. I want a new level. God is asking you silently for what purpose? Why do you want a new level? Will your father partake out of it? Will your mother partake out of it? Will your wife partake out of it? Will your sister, will your sibling partake out of it? If the answer is yes, you will see God and in whatever you desire. 
this same year, somebody will move up to a new level. I said you will move up to a new level. So your desire must not be selfish. It must not be self-centered. Genesis 12, 3. I will bless thee. That I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the heart be blessed. In other words, through you, as you extend to others, they will be blessed through you. This year, many people will be blessed through you. I say many will be blessed through you. Number five. Your desire must be futuristic in nature. So many people make a desire for something very temporary, very immediate, immediate pleasure. They just squander whatever it is. Immediate. They go after immediate thing. But God said, when you are making a desire, let there be a future in your desire. The case of Esau and Jacob came to mind. Esau went to the farm, to the bush, as his normal practice. He was, he was into hunting. He came back. We didn't know whether he brought any animal home because the Bible did not tell us. And he was so tired and hungry and was fainting. And he met his brother, Jacob, sodden pottage. Ever say pottage. You know, how many people know porridge? You know, you know porridge. That kind of, you know, you can ask your neighbor after the service. I don't have much time. <laughs> he saw it, it was red. Wow, what a pottage. This boy can, can cook. He now said, I want to have out of that pottage. And the guy that he was asking pottage from or porridge or whatever had an idea of what Esau stands to get as the firstborn. And he has been desiring to be the firstborn. He has a desire to be the firstborn. Now, that firstborn is not a temporary thing. It won't manifest in the middle. Even if he gets it, it's not going to manifest at that moment. But he want to... He now told him in Genesis chapter 25, verse 27. He said, before I give you my porridge, send me your bad right. Now that word say is a very strong word in that scripture. He said, send me. You know, you can say something without currency. He sold his bad right without any paper currency. He said, your word, your word, and your swearing in those days means a lot. Is someone listening to me? When you say, I sell you my bad right and I swear unto you, they believe that heaven will hold your word. He said, Send me now your bad right. And because Esau was a man of temporal and immediate pleasure. He said, what will this bad right do to me now that I'm fainting? Do you think Rebecca will allow Esau to die of hunger if he refused? Or do you think even Jacob will allow his brother to die of hunger without selling bad right? But because he was a man of immediate pleasure, he was a man that does not value things. He did not regard that bat right as anything. He said, look, I am dying now. What will the bat right do to me? And the Bible says, he sold his bat right. Are you a, are you a, are you a man of value or a woman of value? Many people have sold their future because of a temporal, temporal thing. One of the reasons why God promoted Joseph was because he was a futuristic man. God told Joseph, you are going to be a great man. Here comes the wife of Potiphar and brought herself 
wholeheartedly as a living sacrifice to Joseph. Take me and get. You see, there are things we, that happen, that are conversation, spiritual conversation. You have this great future. Why don't you buy me? Buy me. Use your future to buy the present and get the present Why I take your future away from you. Do you know many of us in our days, you have sold yourself cheaply and sold the future that God has for you. Whatever the enemy has sneakily taken from you, today we reverse the trend. Can I hear a bigger amen? amen? I said we reverse the trend. Because many people cheaply, you just sell yourself. Joseph did not buy it. He am not going to buy this and lose that great future. Few years after that, Joseph found himself as a prime minister of Egypt. The Bible did not record where Potiphar and his wife were. The Bible buried their story forever. Joseph's story will have been buried like that. Assuming he had sold, he had bought Potiphar's wife to himself. When you buy Potiphar's wife, they will sink your destiny to the depth of the sea. So when you see Potiphar's wife, what should you do? <laughs> you run like Joseph. Because you see, there is a trade in life. You trade something for something. Whatever you do, there is a trading going on without a physical currency. Jacob bought the birthright without a physical currency. The only currency was the word and the swearing. God honored the word and he honors the swearing. And so it was like that that Jacob from that day behaved as the elder because there was no labor that was stamped upon him. Nobody stamped a labor and said, you are now the big boy in the family. But that bad right was a futuristic. Tell your neighbor, say, let your desire come and say to you, say, let your desire be futuristic. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm not going to sell my future cheaply. I'm not going to sell my future. All that tell me, Potiphar just present and say, buy me. And he said, buy me. Thank God, Joseph did not buy, buy her. Tell your neighbor, say, I will not buy you. Say, you are too cheap for me to buy. Too cheap. Too cheap. Listen to me. Young man, young woman. Don't buy anything that we don't sell your future because there's a change that takes place when the enemy comes to you, it takes you, and you also give something back. It may not be physically written, but it's written in the annals of God. That's why we have to be careful. Tell your neighbor, say, be careful. Let your desire be futuristic in nature. Go for the future thing. Jacob went for the future thing. Esau went for the temporal and immediate pleasure. And there was an exchange. And eventually, Jacob became that great man. And Esau's name disappeared over time in the Bible. May your future not disappear. I said, may your destiny never disappear. Number six. Your desire can be in the area of marriage because God promised you marriage. For every soul under the sound of my voice, your desire might be in the area of marriage. Proverbs 18.22 says, Who so find it? Tell your neighbor, say, If you find a wife, you find what? A good thing. Many people 
who have not moved forward in the area of marriage, who have not really taken action. Because you see, your desire requires you to take what? Action. Tell your neighbor, say, take action. God said, when you find a wife, what do you find? Say it louder. What do you find? A good thing. A good thing. I always tell young men, the more you delay your marriage, especially if you are of marriageable age, you have roof over your head, you can feed somebody with yourself and pay your bills. If you delay your marriage, you delay the favor of God upon your life. Ask many people. It was when they got married that some level of favor just began to come into their life. Things just began to work. Things that have not been working before. That's why God said, when you find a wife, you find a good thing. And you receive what? God's favor in your life is already in his hand, hanging. Until you find a wife, then he will release that favor. That's why I'm on the neck of some young people. Don't be afraid of me, but this is good for you. If you have roof over your head, you have a good job, what are you waiting for? Why are you playing all around? Find a wife. Find a good thing. And receive what? God's favor. You will discover that progress just comes into your life. I can look at people here that when they found wife, at least I've been in this job for a, for a while, things began to happen. And you know that I know. Things began to happen. Things began to happen for them. Just because they find a wife, God said you find good thing and you move further to find what? Favor. The more you delay getting married, the more you delay the favor that follows marriage. I pray that God will change your heart and cause you to move forward. And to ladies who have been fined, don't play too much. Don't play play game of eh, I'm not ready. I am not this. You're almost 40. Say you are not ready. Get ready. A man that, it, that God is giving you may not look like it because the future is always hidden in the present. Many people don't know who are we in those days. But the future is hidden in our present at that time. What you need to know is, this is the person. Accept the person by faith and see what will turn out over time. Accept the person by faith and move forward and see what will turn out over time. God always wants even ladies to receive men by faith. Not just man receiving you by faith. And everyone we marry is by faith. Are you listening to me? It's by faith. Men receive you by faith. You too must receive a man by what? Faith. Having hope for a greater future. When the wife, my wife met me, what do we have? Nothing. No, nothing. I said faith. Faith. That faith was strong. She followed faith, not money. Because there was no money anywhere. There was no money anywhere. Follow faith. And I can see some of the men here too. When your wife met you, what do you have? I knew Dicky Mojo Yola when the wife met him. When he came to me in casino, that he saw one damn set. I still remember where we sat in the old casino office. There was not any, nothing big deal. I know him. But see, the future of the man was hidden. It takes a woman of faith to see it. It's better to walk by faith and not, don't deny yourself of the opportunity to walk into faith. There's nothing I have to do that I can boast and to my wife and say, I got this thing before you came. What do you mean? It was after she came that many things came. Some people, they want to see things, but they don't know those things are eating. Everybody say eating. They are eating to be expressed. Listen to me. A word is enough for the wise. 
Guys, stop delaying yourself. Ladies, stop delaying yourself. You have been delaying yourself. Pastor, I will bring him. I will bring him. Up to tomorrow, 2021 has passed. 2020 passed. This is 2022 going. Every tomorrow is beginning. When will you come up with something and stop delaying your destiny? When will you come up? I believe God is sending me to some people. Glory to Jesus. Your desire is important. Get your desire granted. And you will see the miracle in your life. Number seven. Your desire can be in the area of health. You are always sick and you want God to heal you. God has covered you up with the scripture. Jeremiah 30, 17. God said, for I will restore health unto you. And I will heal you of your wounds. Tell your neighbor, say God said he will restore health unto you. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, he bore your sickness in his own body on the tree. By whose stripes you are healed. 1 Peter 2, 24 also tells us who bore your sins in his own body on the tree. He said, by whose stripes ye were healed. God has made a provision for your desire before you desire it. Before our desire, there was a provision. Tell your neighbor, say, there is a provision already. Whatever you are desiring, God has made provision. That's why you can have a desire. The provision is there. God is just waiting for you to desire it so that that thing can be granted. And I believe in Jesus' name. Whatever the desire that will move you up to a new level, may the Lord ignite that desire in your heart. God has a desire for you to live in sound health, good health. The Bible has made a provision for it. Jesus has paid the price so that you can be healthy. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in I believe in you. Lay your right hand on your chest and say after me. Say, dear God in heaven, I come to you today in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, who came to this world, who died for me on the cross of Calvary. Today, Lord, I believe in him who died for me, who was buried and he resurrected on the third day for my justification and so Lord I surrender my life to you today I ask that the blood is shed on the cross of Calvary will wash my heart free of sin free of unrighteousness thank you Lord for saving my soul today I am not a child of God because my sins have forgiven me thank you Lord in Jesus' name. Father, take over these lives. Take over these lives. Take over these lives. Walk in them. Walk upon them. Change them from inside out. Inside out. Encounter. Let them have that genuine encounter with the Lord. That will convince them forever. Of what Jesus has done for them. Blessed be your holy name. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Envelop them. And their life will never remain the same. They will serve you all their lives. Thank you Lord. In Jesus name I pray.